So I don't know what I'm gonna call this video. Uh, something about first records to enter my collection, the first records that I recall listening to. Uh, so this is probably early 1980s. I remember I had one of those, I think the brand was Fisher. I remember my second one was a Pioneer. But my first one was a Fisher. Was it just Fisher? Uh, and it was like an all-in-one stackable uh, system and it had a turntable on the top. That's how I remember it. Um, and these are the first records that I remember listening to. So some are probably mid eighties cause I think they came out in the mid eighties. Um, but these were in my <laughs> bedroom that I grew up in. Uh, so this could be a good thread. What albums in your collection are literally the first ones in there. And I still held on to these. There's a couple that I'm missing like meatloaf bad out of hell. That was definitely there. And I couldn't find that. Uh, this is going to be quite the, the reveal because <laughs> there are, uh, some questionable takes here. Uh, so let's just go into it. I have like 10 or 15 of them. These are definitely from when I was a kid, uh, and I held on to them and they were in a batch of records of like stuff that I don't listen to anymore. Um, it's like set aside somewhere, like a closet basically. Uh, so here they are. Yeah, John Cougar Mellon, it's, it's John Cougar Mellon Camp here. Uh, uh-huh is the title of the record. It has Pink Houses, Crumbling Down, Authority Song. Uh, I've been, I, this is, he's like the Eagles. I've gotten back into John Cougar or John Mellon Camp. We're here, John Cougar Mellon Camp uh, of late. Uh, Scarecrow, that's definitely, I got probably, I got, probably got these together. This came out in 1983, so I was nine or 10. Uh, this is definitely from when I was a kid. Uh, this one I remember playing all the time. Cheap Trick, Lap of Luxury. It had the song, The Flame, which was a hit. And this is, I still listen to Cheap Trick. Uh, it's in color, I love that record. Uh, but I had this one and I played it all the time. Uh, Cal Hotel California, of course, the Eagles, one of my first favorite bands. I bought the reissue of this. Here's an artist that I do not like anymore. The best of Eric Clapton. My high school, what year did this come out? 1982. See, it's all like early 80s. Uh, my high school, senior year of high school, our song was Wonderful Tonight at the dance? Prom? I think it was prom. Yeah. Is that what they called it? The prom. <laughs> uh, I was so awkward back then. I remember like asking somebody to go to the prom with me. I didn't even... <laughs> uh, I shot the sheriff after midnight. I haven't listened to Eric Clapton in probably 30 years. Um, the We Are The World soundtrack. Yes. What year did this come out? 1985. Uh, I loved it for Trapped, the Bruce Springsteen song, cover of Jimmy Cliff, which I still listen to all the time. Uh, I loved the song We Are The World when it was out. Uh, what else is on here? What a, what a remember this? Look at, look at all these photos. Uh, so I still have this. That's all I got to say about We Are The World. This is still a great one. Silly Dan's Can't Buy a Thrill, one of my favorite records of all time. Uh, this just, a fan. is that how the back's supposed to look or is that like water or oil? <laughs> I don't know, I think it's supposed to look like that. Uh, tremendous record, one of my favorite records in college and one of my favorite records of all time. My favorite Silly Dan record. Uh, a second Cheap Trick record, I remember buying this, Cheap Trick at Budokan, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, and it has some of the classics. I Want You to Want Me, Surrender. I used to play those all the time when I was just a kid. Well, it's a kid, sixth grade, fifth grade, something. Uh, the Police Synchronicity. Synch synchronicity. I remember I couldn't say that when I bought it. And I remember, I keep saying I remember, well, it's a throwback, that I was invited to see The Police by my friend John. 
to see them in upstate New York. But I had such anxiety as a kid, I couldn't go because I was like worried about something. I don't know what. Uh, I remember my dad had season tickets to New York Yankees and I used to be afraid to go because I was afraid I was gonna hit by a ball because I saw someone get hit in the face when I was a young kid, so I was always scared to go to Yankee games. We went all the time. I never got hit with a ball. Um, but I had a lot of anxiety. <laughs> That's gonna tie into my, my mental health video that I will still, I still plan on doing. But uh, I miss the police because of that. Uh, I'm not gonna say I wish I went. I was a kid and had some problems. But I did like the police back then. I can't say I listen to the police anymore. It's even wrapped around your finger. Maybe I'll kick this in tonight. Uh, every breath you take. Oh, I have no idea. Springsteen's live album. I remember Lane and I got this on the same day. I've, I've spoken about this before. I think one of us got the vinyl and one of us got the cassette. Or they were bought for us by our mom or maybe our stepmom. This is the CD version. I don't think the CDs aren't in here, no. Uh, but th this is probably that period of my life, the record I listened to the most. I remember the opening, Thunder Road at the Roxy in 75. It still gives me chills. Any Boston record would be on there. Uh, which one is this? Oh, this isn't Boston, Boston. This is Boston, Don't Look Back. But listen to Boston all the time then. I remember Lane had a like a Camaro or something, like some used car that he didn't want that my father bought him or something. And it was, any of my friends from high school or grade school who are saying this know the car. It's like a blue or Thunderbird. Is that a Camaro? I don't I remember it, the tape deck didn't work. It had no heat, had no AC. And it was a beast. And he used to listen to Boston and and Springsteen tapes. Tattoo You, definitely up there. One of the first records I, I bought, Hang Fire, Start Me Up. I love this record. Just got the reissue, was it about a year ago? Seeger, probably plenty of Seeger. But this is one that was definitely early in the collection. It says Streetlight, so this is probably not the original that I had, but I remember having this as a kid. So it looks like I bought it again for six bucks at Streetlight. Uh, You'll Accompany Me, great song. Against the Wind, of course, Fire Lake. Whoa, I love that song. Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. Uh, I'm gonna tell the story. I saw Bob Seger in like 1983 or something. First show I ever saw was Elton John. I was apparently two, one or two in Central Park. And we saw Fleetwood Mac and Men at Work. 1982 on the Mirage tour and we saw Bob Seeger and I wore or I bought I think somebody bought a shirt for me either my dad or somebody and it was uh there there was a picture of a woman like the silver bullet like on the silver bullet with like you could see it was a drawing or something like you could see her boobs <laughs> I wore it to school and they sent me home uh, or I wore it to Jim. No, I wore it because there's another story that I've told, uh, which I'll tell right now as well. But this one, they they made me go back because uh, my house was right across the street from the school, and I think I had to go back and get a new shirt. And that was an ongoing joke for really long. I never let, I just put it on. I was like, I'll see her. I think it was on the back. That's why I didn't see it. But there's a funnier story, which I'm going to tell you real quick. Lane went to see Guns N' Roses. I think it was Guns N' Roses and Metallica at the Brendan Byrne Arena, it's like 1990. My younger sister was nine or so, and she had asked Lane if he would buy her a t-shirt. So, so the show ends, and back then, I don't know if it was like this nationally, but at least in Jersey, we did a lot of tailgating, and they would sell shirts in the parking lot, like, like fake shirts, uh, unauthorized shirts in the parking lot. Um, and Lane, like, picked up a shirt for, like, five or ten bucks, like, a small, and just grabbed it and, like, threw it in the car and, like, threw it in the back seat. And Lane's best friend, this guy John, who I, who was, like, a hero to me, he was, like, one of the best basketball players in our school, uh, he passed away maybe ten years ago. 
he's like an idol of mine as a kid. He was a huge Guns N' Roses fan, and uh, and just an awesome basketball player. And I used to play basketball back then. Uh, and they're driving home, and John like picks up the shirt to look at, it, see what it says, and <laughs> it says on the back, or on, but maybe even on the front, GNR FN kicks. A exclamation point, exclamation point, or asterisk, asterisk. She was eight. <laughs> Lane said he almost like drove off the road. They were laughing so hard. And I think she wore it to school and got sent home. Lane, we used to, we've laughed about that story for years. Uh, that was a good one. This was definitely in my collection. Brian Adams' Reckless, Heaven, Summer of 69. Uh, Run To You, I used to play this all the time. Only got a couple more, I have two more, and I'm ending with good ones. And I've shared these before. My mother bought me these. Bruce Springsteen's The River, you can see she bought it for 20, no, seven bucks, sorry. Uh, I remember she bought it at a garage sale. I came home one day and this and the next one I'm about to show uh, were on my bed. It's probably 10 years old. Last, this one was 20 bucks. American Beauty, Grateful Dead. She bought me The River and American Beauty. Those are two good picks. Uh, and I'm always curious where, where she bought these. Like, where did they come from? Who had these? You can say that about a lot of our used records, but uh, this was, uh, it was great. I listened to it all the time, along with The River. There are many more. Maybe I'll do a sub part two, but I would be curious, I'd be curious, like, other folks, what are the first records that came into your collection? Whether you have them anymore or don't. Uh, I thought it was a fun exercise. That's all I got for today. Hope you are all doing well. I saw Joe Pernice at a, uh, at a backyard party yesterday. Tremendous. Um, really, really, it was a really good treat. And I've been thinking, maybe now that I've got a few followers on here, of doing interviews with some of my favorite artists. Somebody like Joe Pernice or Brent Best or Scott Miller. Uh, would you guys be interested in that? Just something to think about or something for me to think about. Uh, a lot of these people are my heroes. I uh, hope you have a good week and I will talk to you soon.